Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're doing a deep dive into the awesome world of English idioms. Oh, yeah. But not just any idioms. We're going to be focusing on the ones that feature animals. Sounds fun. And to help us out, uh, we're going to be taking a look at a YouTube channel called Learn English Through Stories Now. Oh, I like that channel. It's a really clever approach. Yeah. They use stories to help explain these idioms so you can actually see them in action. Right. It's so much easier to remember something when you can picture it. Exactly. And if you're trying to learn English, mm -hmm. you want to be able to sound natural and fluent, you know. For sure. You don't want to sound like you're just reading from a textbook. Not at all. So today we'll break down five of these idioms. Okay from their video and I think you'll be surprised by just how insightful they can be. I'm all ears. So the video follows this group of five friends mm. who go on an idiom hunt. I love that. Right. It's such a fun way to frame it. Yeah. So first up, we have Tom. Okay. Who's trying to figure out the meaning of the early bird gets the worm. Oh, a classic. So he's up early in this village garden uh -huh. and sees this bird getting the worm. Right before all the other birds are even awake. Makes sense. So it's not just about waking up early, right? No, it's about being proactive, taking initiative. Like if you want to get ahead. Seizing the opportunity before anyone else. Exactly. And that applies to so many things. Oh, absolutely. Island. From job hunting to getting tickets to a concert. It's all about that go-getter attitude. You got it. So next, we meet Emily, who's trying to understand the saying. Let me guess. A leopard can't change its spots. I knew it. She comes across a leopard that's feeling down about its spots. Oh, poor thing. But in the end, the leopard comes to accept that, you know. Right. Those spots are a part of who he is. It's a good message, learning to accept yourself. For sure. And it reminds us that some things about a person right. are very hard to change. And sometimes those are the things that make us unique. I like that. But of course, it can also be a bit of a warning, right? Oh, absolutely. Like if someone keeps behaving badly, yeah. you might say, a leopard can't change its spots. Yeah, you're probably right. All right, now things get a little more interesting with Sarah. Okay, what idiom is she tackling? This one is the elephant in the room. Oh, I love this one. And get this. She literally finds an elephant in the village square. No way, seriously. I know, right? But everyone's pretending it isn't there. Oh, I see where this is going. It's such a brilliant visual. Right. For those situations where everyone's aware of a problem. But no one wants to talk about it. It's like that awkward silence when someone brings up politics at a family dinner. Uh, I know exactly what you mean. So it's like Sarah's encouraging us to be brave yeah. and address those issues head on. Because ignoring them just makes things worse. Exactly. It's much better to acknowledge the elephant in the room. So then we have Leo, who is trying to wrap his head around when pigs fly. Haha, uh -huh. of course he is. So naturally he heads to a farm. Hoping to catch a glimpse of those flying pigs. You know it. It's all about those impossible things. Yeah, those promises that are too good to be true. Exactly. Like if someone tells you they'll win the lottery. Right. And buy you a mansion. When pigs fly. Exactly. So it's a fun way to express disbelief. Keeps things lighthearted. And finally, there's Max, who's off on a literal wild goose chase. Oh, I've been on plenty of those. I think we all have. It's so frustrating when you're chasing after something that just keeps moving further away. And you end up wasting so much time and effort. Like when you spend hours searching for something online. And it doesn't even exist. Or trying to convince someone of something when they're just not open to it. Talk about a wild goose chase. Definitely. But I guess the key is to recognize when you're on one. Right. So you can stop wasting your energy. Exactly. And focus on something more worthwhile. So we've covered these five really common animal idioms from Learn English Through Stories Now. They really did a great job of bringing those idioms to life. I think so, too. And it just goes to show that learning a language can be fun. Oh, absolutely. It's all about finding the right approach. And resources that make it enjoyable. Like learn English through stories now. Exactly. Yeah. Because when you're enjoying yourself, you're much more likely to stick with it. And that's when the real learning happens. Absolutely. So don't be afraid to explore, experiment, mm. and have fun with the language. Agreed. It's all about the journey. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, I'm happy to help. But for now, we're going to take a quick break. Sounds good. And when we come back, we'll delve a little deeper into these idioms. Looking forward to it. Stay tuned. I'm not going anywhere. It's crazy how much those five idioms can teach us, right? I know, and we've only just scratched the surface. There are so many more out there. But before we get too carried away, 
I, I want to go back to something you mentioned earlier. Oh, yeah. About how idioms can actually give us some insights into cultural values. Oh, absolutely. Can you expand on that a bit? Sure. Like, take the early bird gets the worm, for example. <laughs> It's not just about being proactive. Right. It also reflects how much English speaking cultures value things like. Like what? Initiative and hard work. So it's like, we're not just learning vocabulary. Yeah. We're actually getting a glimpse into how people think. Exactly. And those values can sometimes be totally different in other cultures. Oh, I bet that leads to some interesting misunderstandings. You can say that again. So remember in the video? How those friends were all excited to share what they'd learned. Oh, yeah. They wanted to go on more idiom adventure. Right. And they wanted to bring everyone along with them. It's contagious, that enthusiasm. It really is. It reminds me of that feeling when you discover a new band. Okay. And you just have to tell all your friends. I get it. You want to share that excitement. Exactly. And language learning, it can be just as enriching as, you know. As like music or art. It now, something I've always wondered about is... Why we use so many animals in our idioms? Hmm. That's a good question. What is it about animals? Yeah. You know? Well, I think part of it is that animals have always been a part of our lives. You know, we've watched them. We've right. learned from them. Yeah. And over time, we've started to assign certain characteristics to different animals. So, like, the lion is brave. Yes. And the fox is cunning. Okay. And the dove represents peace. So we kind of see ourselves in them. In a way, yes. And we use those associations to create these metaphors. Precisely. So when we say something like, strong is an ox, mm -hmm. everyone understands what that means. Even if they've never actually seen an ox. Exactly. It's just this really powerful way to communicate. And what's interesting is that a lot of these animal associations, they transcend cultural boundaries. Oh, really? Yeah, like the idiom, kill two birds with one stone. Okay. It's understood in so many different cultures. Even though the specific type of bird might be different? Exactly. So we've talked about how learn English through stories now makes learning fun. Mm. We've explored the cultural side of idioms. Right. And we've even touched on the power of animals in language. It's all connected. What other key takeaways do you think are important here? Well, I think the biggest one is yeah. don't just memorize the idioms. You have to learn how to actually use them. Right. It's all about practice. Exactly. Try using them in conversations. Even if you make mistakes. It's all part of the process. The goal isn't to become like a walking dictionary of uh -huh. idioms. Right. It's about using them naturally to make your communication more interesting. And more effective. Exactly. So don't be afraid to experiment. Have fun with it. Practice is definitely key. It really is. Like anything you want to get good at. Instruments, sports, you name it. Exactly. You can't just read about no, it. No, you got to get out there and do it. And that's where resources like Learn English yeah. through Stories Now can be so helpful. They make learning these idioms fun and accessible. Which is huge, especially if you're learning on your own. Right. But even if you're already pretty good at English, mm -hmm. learning idioms can really take you to the next level. Absolutely. So let's go back to some of the idioms we've talked about okay. and see if we can dig a little deeper. Sounds good. Like, the early bird gets the worm. Right. It's not just about taking initiative. No. I think it also highlights the importance of preparation. That's a great point. That early bird didn't just stumble upon that worm. No, he probably had a plan. Exactly. Like having a goal in mind and then taking steps to achieve it. And that brings up another interesting point. Oh. Idioms can actually change over time. Really? How so? Well, like a leopard can't change its spots. Okay. It often means some things are just fixed. Right. But it can also apply to situations where change is possible, but it takes a lot of work. So instead of just saying someone can't change. Yeah. It could be like a challenge. Exactly. It's like saying it's hard but not impossible. Okay, what about the elephant in the room? What about it? We talked about addressing those uncomfortable issues. Mm. But what if those elephants are ignored for too long? Ooh, that's a good question. I mean, those issues can really fester. They can, and they just keep growing. Leading to all sorts of problems. It's like a small crack in a foundation. Right, eventually the whole thing crumbles. Exactly. So we have to be brave enough to confront those elephants. Even if it's awkward or uncomfortable. Because in the long run, It'll save us a lot of trouble. For sure. Communication is key. Now let's have a little fun with when pigs fly. Oh, uh -huh, right. It usually means something's impossible. Right. But could it also be a reminder to not limit ourselves? I like that. To not be afraid to dream big. Because sometimes those pigs do fly. You're right. When we achieve something that seemed out of reach. 
It's a reminder that anything is possible. Exactly. And it's all about pushing those boundaries. That's a and what about a wild goose chase? What about it? It can be really frustrating. Yeah, all that wasted time and effort. 